In this video, which is part two of the convertible debt video that I did yesterday. Before you watch this video, make sure you watch part one in order to understand uh, more about what I'm about to say in this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mariusz Konieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, a private website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I also wrote 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. Recently, I also created Value Investing University, which is a free resource for you to become a more intelligent investor. So sign up for a free account. In part one of this video series, I talked about convertible debt as it being one of the funding options for companies. And while on surface, it might look great and it might be sold to the CEO or to the investors as a better way to finance the company's growth uh, with as little dilution as possible. So the way it works is that, let's say you have a market cap of $10 million and the, the CEO needs $5 million, you know, to fund the development. And you can get a convertible debt for $5 million, which is convertible into shares. And if the price of the stock goes from, let's say, $1 to, to $5, then it gets converted into shares. The dilution is much less than 50%, which it would be if it was a straight equity raise. But then if the stock goes down 50 or 80% or whatever, and then the debt, which is the fixed amount, gets converted into shares, the dilution is incredible that lender might end up owning the majority of your company. So this was a simplistic way of telling you how convertible debt is, is dangerous, but in reality, that's not what happens. In reality, the, the lenders play games and the lenders short the stock and then they convert it at a lower price. So here's what I mean. Again, let's picture a company that has a 10 million market cap. 10 million market cap, 10 million shares, $1 per share for the stock price. And you get 5 million of convertible debt, okay? And the CEO goes to the, uh, the bankers and says, oh, if you give me this 5 million, our stock is gonna do this, we're gonna do all these wonderful things and it's gonna go up 5X. And the banker is like, oh yeah, it sounds like a great business. Uh, how about you do a convertible debt? Oh yeah, convertible debt might be a good idea. So then they give you the five, five million. Okay, and then the problem is that they're not interested in your company. The lenders are not interested in the company most of the time, because especially when someone is forced to do a convertible debt, maybe the business is not strong enough to, to attract regular financing, and that's why they're doing convertible debt. So what happens most of the time is that the convertible debt is convertible at a particular stock price. Okay, it's, it's not stated what the stock price is, but the entire 5 million can be converted. And because the lender doesn't care about the company, and then when they convert, there is a discount. So let's say the VWAP, which is VWAP, which is a volume weighted average price. Let's say it's at a dollar, okay? The lender can convert at a discount, okay? So, they might convert at 75 cents while the VWAP is at a dollar, okay? So what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell the stock short at a dollar and then they're gonna convert at a 75 cents. So they, they get that spread, right? Now, it gets even worse because instead of just getting the spread of 25 cents, what they're gonna do is they're gonna hire pumpers to, they know that the VWAP is at a at dollar, okay? They're gonna hire somebody or pumpers to make the stock go to like dollar 25 or dollar 30 in a very short period of time without impacting the VWAP because the VWAP is the average over the last 30 days. So they can get the stock to go to 30. They're gonna short it at 130 and they're going to convert at 75. So they get this huge spread for playing the games. And so the problem is that even if your business is strong enough to truly go to $5, the convertible debt becomes such a huge overhang, even though the stock might deserve 
a $5 valuation. It's unlikely to go there because these bankers continue pounding and pounding your stock over and over and over in order to make those spreads. Those two reasons are really why convertible debt is such a bad financing option, can turn into a complete disaster. In part one, I talked to you about how if the stock goes down a lot and then they convert, they ended up owning such a huge part of your company. But in reality, they're not interested in owning the company. In reality, they're interested to pound the stock and well, they're not interested in pounding the stock. They're interested in capturing that spread. So that creates continuous selling to the gullible retailers because they constantly have to find retailers through pumping and promotion in order to sell them the stock short and then that they can convert. And when the CEO goes and says, if we do convertible debt, are you going to short my stock? they always will tell him, oh, no, 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 we don't sell the stock. It's just like saying to somebody that, to anybody, you or me, saying that, hey, you can sell something at $1.30 and you can buy it back at 75 cents, but it's not very ethical to do it. They'll tell you on the phone they're not going to do this, but then they'll, they'll go to the brokerage account and that they're going to do it over and over and over and with lying you in, in the face that they're not doing this. In summary, convertible debt sounds like a great financing option for companies that need to raise money. I suggest when you look at companies, especially in the microcap space, look at their balance sheet. Look at if they have convertible debt on the balance sheet. Find out what are the terms of that agreement because this could turn out to be disastrous for the business, for the stock, but also think about if a CEO chooses to go with that option. If he truly doesn't understand the implications of it or if he had to take that option because he had no other options available. And if he had no other options available, then maybe you should think twice about whether you should be invested in a company like this. So. I'm just throwing it out there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take a moment to subscribe to it, turn on the notification button, leave me a comment and share the video. Thanks for watching.